come and made it through. And we got all the way through the book of Genesis. So let's open in prayer and then we'll dive in. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this book. We thank you that you inspired Moses to write it. We know that this big burden on his heart at the time was for the people that he was shepherding, that he was concerned about and wanted to make sure that they would be prepared to enter the promised land and that they would follow you and that they would know how faithful you are. But Father, we just think about the countless believers that Moses' writings have blessed down to the ages and down to us. And we ask, Father, that you would continue to open our hearts and our minds to this book and to the rest of your word, and that it would change us, and uh, that we would be conformed more and more to the image of Christ. Father, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, well, before we jump into Genesis, we'll look at the last of the minor prophets. We've come to the end of that as well. Malachi. So on your timeline sheet, you can write his name down there on blank number 12. He's not only the last time-wise, but he's also the last in the Old Testament, the very last book. And the date for him that we're using is 460 B.C. So that's the timeline. Uh, he lived somewhere in Judah, so you can draw a little stick man on your map. Somewhere in Judah, if you still have room. <laughs> but the next time I do these maps, I'm going to make them a little bigger. So you have more room to draw on. But anyway. And then we want to look at Malachi in perspective. So this is getting to your notes. Um, his ministry took place almost a hundred years after King Cyrus gave that decree that allowed the Jewish people and other exiles to return to their various homelands. Uh, Malachi ministered about 80 years after Haggai and Zechariah had encouraged the people to complete the temple. So he's a whole generation removed from them. Uh, the people of his day once again, were very discouraged uh, for several reasons. Even though they'd been allowed to return to Judah, they still had no Davidic king. You know, they were under the king of Persia. They didn't have their own sovereign nation, you might say. And Judah itself was just one very small province within the Persian Empire. The Persian Empire spread all the way from Egypt, you know, to the Euphrates. It was vast. And when you think about it, under King David and King Solomon, the Jewish nation had been very large. Now it's just shrunk to this one little section, and it's just one little tiny part. You might say they don't get no respect, you know. So not only that, but they were experiencing economic difficulties again due to drought and crop failure, and they were in spiritual decline. So it was just kind of a depressing time <laughs> for them. So what does God do when he sees us in discouraging circumstances? As always, it's the word of the Lord that revives our spirits. And so Malachi begins this book describing his message as the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. God sending me a special message, you know. And I, I, was, I didn't realize this. Nearly half of the verses in this book include phrases like, thus says the word of the Lord. I mean, that's a, you know, begin half your verses that way. He's really pushing that idea home. God has a message. He hasn't forgotten you. You know, he has a message for you. And uh, he describes God very frequently in this book as the Lord of hosts. That host refers to angelic armies. So, and that would have had meaning for them because, again, they're not a sovereign nation. They have no army of their own anymore. They might have seen Persian soldiers. Later on, they would see Roman soldiers. But no army of their own, so they're very vulnerable. But hearing from the Lord of hosts would remind them that God was in charge of a vast angelic army 
who was there standing ready to protect them. So that would have been a reassuring phrase for them. They're not alone, they're not defenseless. God is with them, he's on their side. And then another thing that we see in Malachi is this thing about my messenger. That's actually what Malachi's name means, my messenger. And a significant part of his message, Malachi 3 verse 1 says, Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. Is that beginning to remind you of anybody? And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. Does that remind you of anybody? And the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, behold, he's coming, says the Lord of hosts. This prophecy was fulfilled about 400 years later in the person of John the Baptist. John was sent to prepare the way for Jesus Christ. And Jesus did come to the temple. So, John prepared the way before Jesus Christ, who did come to the temple during his earthly ministry. So, God uses one messenger, Malachi, to encourage his people with the word of another messenger who's coming, John the Baptist. So I just thought that was kind of cool. I mean, he's, even his name is rather prophetic in his book. So that completes what we're doing with um, the uh, minor prophets. And I think we'll wait to do the New Testament until when we start in August. We'll give ourselves a little break. Because this next um, study is going to be a little bit of a push since we're doing a lesson a week. Uh, well, we could do that for nine weeks, so. but we'll give ourselves a little break from the other things. So with that, we're ready to go to Daniel's. Episode.